right, team, we're gonna get started with our four. So let's everyone get in positions. And we just wanna say hello and welcome to you folks tuning in. My name is Keloha and I will be producing this weekend. It's a little behind the scenes for you this weekend as we celebrate our mothers, but we also have Pastor Garrett and Pastor Donovan standing by downstairs in our front lobby. So let's go ahead and let's roll the cameras to you. All right, guys, we're gonna get started. Counting down from our countdown in three, two, one. Turn it over to you, Pastor Garrett. Thanks, Kealoha, and welcome everyone. My name is Garrett, and I have with me Pastor Donovan. Aloha, everyone. So glad to be with you today on this Mother's Day weekend. That's right. And of course, we want to invite you, like we always do every weekend, to jump in the chat. We want to get to know you, and especially if you're a mom, happy Mother's Day, and we want to thank you especially. And we want to invite you to share the service as well. Hey, share the service with your mom. It's a yep, perfect Mother's Day gift. Uh, like Kealoha has said, we are celebrating our moms here today. And so if you're a mom out there, we love you. Thank you for uh, loving us, for shepherding us, and for caring for us. Uh, you know, happy Mother's Day. That's right. And as a tangible happy Mother's Day, we want to give you a free gift if you're a mom or a motherly figure in someone's life. And if you want to get that free gift, just let us know your address, Facebook message us, or email us at online at enuhope.org or just say in the chat, hey, reach out to me, here's my email. We would love to send you a free gift. And so, you know, Garrett, one of the special things about Mother's Day in Hawaii is that we don't just celebrate our moms, we celebrate our Hanai moms. And for all of you who may not be tuning in from Hawaii, what a Hanai mom is, is that it's a mother that we adopt as our own because they love and care for us just like our real moms. So today, if you're an auntie, a Hanai mom, uh, or you're just a mom, uh, why don't you email that address? We would love to celebrate you today. And you're gonna hear in just a moment from a family that we were just talking about, a Hanai mom. So with that, take a look at this. Hi, I'm Marissa. I'm mom. <laughs> I'm Tish. <laughs> I'm Marissa's mom. We like to go thrifting, thrifting. together. <laughs> yeah. We like to go to the plant place together, but any only please. <laughs> no, not any. Only if they're below twenty dollars. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> we like to host events. No, <laughs> you do. <laughs> you like I. You like to help me. Yeah, for sure. When I host events. Yeah. <laughs> You just got to find common interests and from there find opportunities to do it together. Like you always are like, oh, do you want to go Home Depot? <laughs> do you want to go Costco? Do you want to go Savers? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we always do yeah. that kind of stuff together. Yeah, it's like I'm happy to, to share what I have, but it's not gonna like um, dictate how I enjoy my hobbies. It's like if you wait till the kids are older, if you wait till your husband's gonna go with you, it might never happen. <laughs> so you, you need to develop your own interests and your own hobbies so that you can maintain your own identity. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day! Hi, my name is Jara Silva and I'm the Children's Art Director. I'm here with my Hanai son, Kainoa. Okay, to me, Hanai means that um, it's almost like adopting, you know, a child. Um, feeling that they're part of your family and that you want to have them join your family and treat them just like a, your son, just like they are part of your family. Even though they have a different mom and dad, he's adopted us as his mom and dad as we've adopted him as a son. We were all doing ministry as a family, and I remember him 
coming to the classrooms. And he said he would like to, um, you know, come and serve with my son, Jace. And I thought, oh, okay, that's, that's nice. And then one day he, he came with a duffel bag and I'm like, what are you doing? And he said, can I come over and sleep at your house? And I said, no, you know, where's your mom and dad? <laughs> And he's like, oh, they said I can come home with Jace and we're going to go beach or we're going to do something fun. And I thought, okay, well, that's kind of like, an, you know, a good thing. They're building team. They're building, you know, relationship. But I didn't know he wasn't ever going to go home after that. <laughs> it was like every weekend. Yep. They were coming over, yep. and so we changed our upstairs and we made sure they had a like a little closet and futon beds. We totally, bought, yeah, totally. And so they stayed over for the weekends, and it started being the weeks. <clears throat> Ever since then, you know, just seeing how a family, you know, how a family was, you know, I, I I loved it. I totally loved it, and I was like, okay, Lord, you know. Can I have this as a family? And sure enough, you know, mom, you guys accepted me as you guys' son, and I'm so totally grateful for it. I'm not gonna cry. You cry? <laughs> I'm not gonna <laughs> cry. <laughs> you know, this is what my mom and dad did. You guys invested in me and also taught me how to do my first devotions. And I'll never forget it because to this day, I still do devotions. But I also have it with my mom, guys. I share some stuff, and they keep me accountable on those things. So I am forever grateful for that. And again, I'm holding my tears because this is mommy. <laughs> Crying. But yes, mom, thank you very much for having me part of the family. Now I greatly appreciate it. But happy Mother's Day, mom. Happy I Mother's love Day. You. I love you too. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Thank you to Auntie Jera, Kainoa, Auntie Tish, and Marissa for sharing your stories while we celebrate all of you moms out there today. And you know, Auntie Jera and Kainoa, they actually serve together as a mother and son on our children's art team. Marissa serves on our online team, and Auntie Tish is, yes, Garrett's mother-in-law, but she is also one of the amazing people on our photography team. She's always spotted with her camera in hand, and this past Sunday, she actually was with her camera in hand at baptism, photographing all the special memories of people making that public declaration of faith, saying, yes, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So congratulations to all of you who made that special next step. Yes, we want to say congratulations, and of course, we want to offer to you that that's not the only next step we have here at New Hope. If you want to go ahead and continue growing, you can by attending Growing Deep, Growing Strong. It's our membership course here at New Hope Oahu, and we would love to invite you to it on May 14th. If you want to find out more about it, go to enuhope.org. But I want to let you know that Growing Deep, Growing Strong is all about making sure you have deep roots in the faith, deep roots with God, so that you can grow no matter what the season looks like for you. That's right, and the other next step that we have actually was our big announcement last weekend. And in case you missed it, why don't you take a look at this? Hi, I'm Louis Giglio, and I want to welcome you to our journey through the Book of Acts. We are going to see how God's story unfolds and moves out on planet Earth and how it's still moving even today. You'll be my witnesses. Think about that. What does it mean? It means that we're going to be the bullhorn, if you will, to the world that proclaims the story that Jesus is alive. At the heart of our gospel is a cross, but the power source is the empty tomb. In fact, you're gonna see an incredible promise. There is a very clear purpose, and you're gonna see that there is all sufficient power for every single believer. God is giving us a purpose for our lives and the power to carry out that purpose until the end of time. We've got our marching orders from someone who has demonstrated ultimate power, and that is power over sin, death, hell, 
and the grave. The book of Acts is still unfolding. The church is still exploding. And the world still needs to hear about Jesus. I want to personally invite you, if you live off island or if you live on the mainland, you can go ahead and join us for Wednesdays at 3 p.m. starting May 18th. And go to edenhope.org slash events to sign up. See you there. And I'll be hanging out with Pastor John backstage for our segment called The Afterward. We're going to be diving deep into what Pastor John just shared to figure out how we can apply it to our lives. So I hope you join me after the final song for The Afterward. Stick around. All right, Donovan, I think it's time to wrap it up and go to service. So from all of us to all of you, happy Mother's Day. My name is Garrett. This is Donovan and Kealoha. We'll see you in the chat room and in service. Aloha. Send it to service, guys. Don't you love our mom? Let's all stand. Aloha, aloha, awinala. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to New Hope Oahu, everyone online. Today is a very, very special day. In fact, it's a very special weekend. Why? Because it's Mother's Day. Let's... Okay, since you're all standing, I'm going to ask all the mothers to raise their hands. Raise your hands, mom. There. Give them a hand, husband. Yes, everywhere. Moms, on behalf of our ohana, we want to thank you for being who you are, or for being the one that would reprimand us, would love us, and thank you for, for serving us. And today, we just want to honor you and tell you we love you, and the Lord loves you more. Amen? Amen. So, because we're family, we always like to kind of catch up. Now, how many sports lovers do we have out there? Raise your hand. How many University of Hawaii lovers do we have out there? Okay. What does that mean? The University of Hawaii volleyball team, for the second time, the second year, won the national championship one hour ago. Now, now, like, if for some reason you were going to DVR it and I just spoiled it for you, don't write me an email and say naughty, 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 okay? <laughs> but also as a family, we always want to celebrate great ministry events. And I want you to help me 
in celebrating that this past Sunday we had 36 people water baptized. Yep. And on Wednesday, we launched our Nakapuna ministry, which means all the silver-haired, beautiful people. It was packed here in the middle with all of our Nakapunas. Let's thank the leaders for a great time, great food, great message from Pastor Richard. And last night was so special. Last night, we had a Mother's, uh, Mother's Day dinner here, and it was beautiful. The food, the entertainment. Let's thank the leaders, Pastor Fred, Kea, and all of them for putting on. Today, today we have baby dedication. They're here, give them a hand. Such a special time. But today we're going to continue in our series, Jesus Made His Move. What's yours? And I'm going to talk to you today about being a house of miracles and about coming alive for Jesus. But first, we're going to come before the throne of the Lord and we're going to pray and we're going to worship Him for the great God that He is, especially on this Mother's Day and blessing us with our beautiful mothers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to come together to worship you and to lift up our beautiful mothers to you here and online for all that they do. But Lord, we together come before your throne and give you our hearts in worship. And everybody said, Amen. Let's worship. Come on.
that clap offering. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, we worship you. Our Lord in heaven, thank you. How many of you would say that the Lord, our God, Jesus Christ is worthy? Amen? How many of you would say that you would love to see him come alive? Amen? A pule kako, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the midst of worship, it is our privilege and honor to give you our hearts because you are so worthy. In everything that you do, Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we honor you today, and we thank you for your presence, Jesus Christ, here in the house of the Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your moving during our worship and capturing our hearts. And we thank you that together as family, we can honor our mothers. And Lord, we do this all because we are in your ohana, your family, and because this is the house of the Lord. And this will be the house of miracles. And this will be where you, Jesus, will come alive as we are led through the power of the Holy Spirit. So have your way and move in this service, Lord. We thank you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord. Well, you may be seated. Today, as I shared, we, it's a very special weekend that we get to. We get to dedicate our wonderful children to bring them up. Today, that we have Cameron and we have Judah that's joining us. Give them a hand with their families. Oh, my. Yeah, right here in the middle. So beautiful. And this is Cameron, and this is Judah. All right. Well, today is very special because we get to dedicate, consecrate your children. Are all of you with me? I want you to reach out your hands. Okay, you see all those hands? Those are all your babysitters. <laughs> no, okay, you can put them down for now. But today, we get to dedicate and consecrate them to the Lord. 
you know, in, they're going to put the scripture up, but in Psalm 127, 3, it says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And so today we get to do three things. We get to thank the Lord for your beautiful children. We get to dedicate and consecrate them. And I get to actually share with you the vows that you will take, that you as a responsibility for your children, okay? So first of all, what I'm going to share is in Proverbs 22, 6, the word says, train up a child in the way he should go, even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So I'm going to share some vows, and you get to repeat it after me, just like when you got married and say, I do, okay? Remember that when you said, I do? All you have to do is say, I do, okay? So here are the vows. Do you recognize your children as gifts from God and give heartfelt thanks for God's blessing? Amen. Amen. Do you now consecrate and dedicate your children to the Lord, surrendering all worldly claims upon their lives and that they will belong wholly to God? Amen. Okay. And do you pledge as parents that with God's fatherly help that you will bring up your children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord with patience and love to build the word of God, the character of Christ, and the joy of the Lord into their lives? I do. Okay. Final one. Do you promise to serve and provide for the physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual needs of your children? Okay, that wasn't, that wasn't hard, yeah, it was easy, okay. So, in the Bible, know that by anointing someone with, with oil, the oil was made to set them apart and consecrate them, and like in the temple, as with Aaron. And so today, in Leviticus, I want to share, Leviticus 8.12 says, And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. I'm going to anoint your children all right here, okay? And we're going to pray for them. Okay, now you guys can reach out your hands. Come on, reach out your hands, okay? Okay, and Judah, right over here. Okay, my brother, give me, give me five, give me five. There you go. I got to make friends first. <laughs> here we go, right there. Oh, right there, Judah. Oh, right there. Okay. And Cameron, give me five. There you go. Okay. Oh, he wants to come to me. He loves me. <laughs> okay, let us pray. Could you reach out your hands to them? Lord, with this anointing oil and prayer, we dedicate, consecrate, and set apart these children to you together with their parents. We surrender them to you and pray for your covering of protection, anointing, and blessings. We ask for your hand and guidance on their parents to raise and bring them up in the ways of the Lord. We pray for provision that you will meet all of their earthly, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual needs. Lord, may these children come to know you and trust you as their Savior and follow in your ways until you return. We pray this in the loving name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. Amen. And one last scripture that I'd like to share with you. May the Lord give you increase to you and your children. You have beautiful children. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you for dedicating and consecrating them today. Let's give our parents a hand. God bless you. Okay. Well, be, you got to stand up again and, and turn to your neighbor and give them aloha because we are ohana with much aloha. Greet your neighbors before you're seated. ourselves into our children every hour of every day. We are grandmothers who are also playing the role of primary caretaker. We are moms who are waiting to have children and trying our best to see the struggle through the eyes of God. We are moms who are learning the challenges of a blended family. We are moms in the workplace who are trying our best to balance competing expectations and demands. We are moms with adult children who are leaving our homes to pursue their own dreams. For packing lunches late at night. For cleaning out their backpacks, then filling them again. 
for offering gentle guidance to your own grown children, for becoming taxi drivers and appointment schedulers, for making sure the right baby doll is in their arms before they go to sleep, for helping them pay back their student loans, for cleaning and sterilizing and cooking, for doing their laundry and his laundry and our laundry, for praying and loving and forgiving and falling down and rising to your feet again. For the mom who is overworked and exhausted. For the mom who seems to spend a million hours on a million little things. For the mom who pours Jesus into her family as best she can. And God himself not only celebrates what you do, but rejoices over the uniqueness of who you are. You are seen and you are loved without limits. Welcome to Mother's Day. Welcome to Mother's Day indeed. Haoli la makuahine. Happy Mother's Day weekend. Happy Mother's Day. And yes, there's a box. And what that means is our cafe in celebration of Mother's Day weekend, we are uh, got Onokine grinds, we've got Kalua pig cabbage, chicken long rice, and shrimp curry. So I believe this is Polly sitting right up in the front here. Happy Mother's Day, sister. Go ahead. Enjoy. Just got to redeem that at the end. You don't need to share. It's Mother's Day. You can just keep it all to yourself. Hello, Ohana, once more. Hey, we want to just go ahead and share with you before Pastor John comes up with a wonderful message. Uh, some ways that we can connect as a church family. And so one of the things we want to let you folks know is that uh, this, well, let me start in the, far, the farthest date out. On March 21st, we are going to be having an open house for our Kulia Christian Academy. We're going to be here at Saturday, 9 to 11.30. And the reason that is really a, a God's blessing thing is that because many of you have asked for, have called, have prayed for a place where our children can be raised up in the admonition of the Lord. That we can continue and provide for them a biblical view of our ohana and more so God and living in this life. So Kulia Ikanubu, uh, Saturday, May 21st, join us here, 9 to 11.30. It is our open house. Invite others to it. In this week, though, on Tuesday, can I hear all the ladies in the house, please? Okay, that'll do. Praise God. What's happening is our amazing women in the word, our women's study is coming back this coming Tuesday at the 10th. And we'll be studying as far as, well, they'll be studying. But uh, Susie Lamb will be leading a study in uh, several of the different epistles. And it's going to be great. It's going to be right here from 630 to 830. Women in the Word, join us Tuesday nights. We also want to let you know this coming Saturday, which is the 14th, we are going to be having our membership class. We call it Growing Deep, Growing Strong. And so if you want to join as far as if God has called you, more importantly, to this part of the kingdom, New Hope Oahu, join us for membership class. It's really simple. There's no cost to it. But you get to learn why we have come together, why God's brought us together with Pastor Sean and a lot of other of our pastors and leaders. And we come together right here from 9 to 12. Again, no cost. All you need to do is register. You can check us out at enewhope.org. On Sunday, we'd also like to let you know that we are launching our all-church small group series. And this is part of our heritage here at New Hope, that there are seasons where God has called us to study our small and small groups in life groups, the word of God. And we'll be looking at the acts of, this, the, acts of the apostles. We'll be starting on uh, Sunday the 15th. And what will be happening is we have materials for you. We have encouragement. We'll try to answer as many questions that you might have. If you want to get into a group, if you want to study with a group, if you just want to get materials to study, we'll be out both in the connection lobby as well as the front lobby to answer any questions and give you materials. If you don't have a life group, not a problem. Wednesdays at 3 p.m., we're going to have a corporate group online, so you can join Pastor Garrett and team, and they'll go ahead and host you. Aloha to those of you online. And for those of you that want to meet in person, we'll have a 4 o'clock on Thursday. I'm sorry. We'll have on Thursdays a life group as well where you can meet live corporately. That's going to be happening Sunday. And there's one other thing before we ask the ushers to receive the tithes and the offerings. On the 15th, and this concerns those that come on Sunday. So if you normally come on Sunday or if you can pass the word, we have the Hawaii Triathlon happening. And what that means is that we have traffic lanes that will be cut off until about 9 a.m., hopefully sooner. If you are coming to Sunday service next week on the 15th, 
please make sure that you either go past Sand Island Access Road, up to the viaduct, down on Nimitz, just make a UE, come back in, you'll be okay. Don't be giving the city and state workers eye. Just let people run and let them do the coning. Amen? We're going to ask the ushers that they would kindly receive, get ready to receive the tithes and the offerings. We were reading today uh, as far as in our readings. And if you uh, haven't had a chance to join us as a church to uh, do our daily readings, there's a bookmark right in the front of you in the little pocket doohickey there. Join us. But in the gospel today, it talks about as far as alluding to the end times. Pastor John and Lanu have always been diligent in this season and the other pastors to make sure that we kind of, not kind of, but weigh according everything. It's the times that are happening according to the word of God. Our tithes and the offerings, may I just encourage for this evening, what you give to resource in so many different ways others is allowing a bunch of our keiki to be in children's church right now in children's art and the forthcoming Kulia Academy so that our kids and the generations forthcoming will be able to have a biblical worldview that you instill in your homes. We and uncles and aunties can promote when we get together in fellowship like this and God will be glorified. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to thank you for our moms, your amazing daughters, and to thank you for all that you provide. Father, I'm just amazed that you would allow us, Father God, to have a biblical worldview by just looking at you, Lord Jesus, and the comfort that brings. Father, as we believe for miracles and we choose to go on after you've made your choice to do what you did, thank you for meeting us right where we're at, wherever that may be. In Jesus' name, amen. Ohana, please receive.
Let's all thank Meliana and the team. House of Miracles, to come alive in the name of Jesus. Today is a profound day because today we're going we're gonna to shift and we are going to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you out there today would say, I want to come alive in the name of Jesus. I want to be moved by the Holy Spirit. How many of you out there today would say, I want this house, I want New Hope Oahu to be a house of miracles where we see miracles and we see prayer answered. Well, we're going to do something different. We're going to have you join us because this is our anthem for this series that we would be a house of miracles. I'm going to ask you all to stand right now. This is our anthem that this church would come alive in the name of Jesus through the book of Acts and that we would be a house of miracles. And not only that, but in your homes, you will see miracles in your homes. Can I hear an amen? So I want you to sing this out with all of your hearts that we would come alive in the name of Jesus. Here we go. Woo! Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is the house of miracles. Yeah. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. Oh, sing it again. Come alive. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Oh, this is a house. Everything in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and thank our wonderful worship team, Meliana. And all. You may be seated. Wow. Now that's what I call coming alive in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen? And we want that to happen in our house of New Hope Oahu. We want that to happen in our house of miracles. Today I'm going to talk to you about a house of miracles in Acts Church. You know why? In our series... Jesus made his move. What's yours? Our series is basically about the book of Acts. It's going to be about the book of Acts. You see, in the book of Acts, the book of Acts talks about Jesus and the life of Christ to the beginning of the church as we know it and when Jesus will come again prophetically. And we're going to talk about that today. And we're going to talk about how we as a church, as we jump in, as we let the Holy Spirit move in us like you just saw. That was a lot of life in our church. Amen? Amen. Yes. We are going to see how God will move. We're going to see how God will answer prayer. So today, I'm going to be very direct. I'm going to give you the blueprint of how we're going to be an Acts church as we deep dive into the book of Acts. So maybe not too many jokes or funnies, but I hope that it will be heartfelt and soul-searching. But, you know, because it's Mother's Day, maybe one joke, one joke. You guys want to hear a joke? Not, oh, uh, with that response, I'm not going to say, do you want to hear a joke? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you the joke. I was going to tell you anyway. So, a Mother's Day joke. A daughter and a, a mother are hanging out, and the little girl tells her mother, Mom, how did the human race come to be? Well, the mom tells the little girl, well, God created Adam and Eve, and they had children, and then they had children, and that's how mankind came to be. So two days later, she goes to her father. She says, Dad, how did the human race come to be? And Dad goes, oh, 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 oh. oh well, 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 there, there, there was monkeys, 
and then they, 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 they evolved, and then they developed, and, and you got mankind. Well, the daughter gets so confused. She goes back to her mom and says, Mom, you told me that, that the human race came about because God created Adam and Eve, and they had children, and they had children, and Dad just told me that we come from monkeys. And don't mothers know it all? Don't they have the best answers for everything? Mother said, don't worry about it, dear. It's so simple. I was telling you about my side of the family. Your dad was telling you about his side of the family. They're all monkeys. <laughs> now, when I tell you a joke, there's always a point to it, okay? There is a point to this monkey joke. I want to tell you that each and every one of you right here, you belong to the Ohana, the family of God. You are children of Jesus Christ. And can I hear an amen? amen? And I want to tell you that not only are you family, but you are our family, and you are in what you're going to see is a house of miracles. And you are going to see how there will be breakthrough. You're going to see how the Holy Spirit will move. You're going to see how healing will take place because we believe and stand in faith. That in a house of miracles, moved by the Holy Spirit, when we come alive in Jesus, these things happen. Can you hear it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So I'm going to jump right into the message. I'm going to talk to you about the book of Acts. The book of Acts, which is the basis of our series, Jesus Made His Move, What's Yours? The book of Acts is broken down into five parts. Five parts. Five themes. The first theme is the beginning of the church as we know it, the founding of the church, okay? Number two is Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was bestowed and came to rest upon the apostle, impossible, apostles, and because of that, we can enjoy the power and the moving of the Holy Spirit. That is the second theme of Acts as you read chronologically through the book of Acts. The third theme is that all the people who would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Why? Because of the fourth theme, which is the witnessing and testifying of the apostles. Now, in the fifth theme in the book of Acts, what happens is a little different. It's about oppression and persecution. Remember the stoning of D Stephen and how he is stoned to death? Well, they thought in those times that who are these people rising up and talking about this person, Jesus. So they tried to kill the church by opposition and persecution. But you know what happened? It was a catalyst. It was what took the church worldwide. Why? Because as they were oppressed and persecuted, the believers dispersed. They went from Jerusalem, they went to Judah, they went to, they, they went to Judea, they went to Samaria, they went to Africa, and that is how the church grew. Now, why is this so important to us? Why is this applicable today? Why is Pastor John sharing with you so excitedly? Do you see how excited I am? Why is he sharing with you so excitedly about why this is relative to us? I'm going to tell you. It aligns with who we are. It aligns with what we're going through. And it perfectly aligns with our church, our family here at New Hope Oahu. Now, let me tell you how it worked. In the beginning of the book of Acts, right? It's about the beginning of the church. I will tell you right now, and we've mentioned it before, New Hope Oahu right now is in a season of re-pioneering. We are re-pioneering the church, and we're looking to reach people in so many different ways. Now, many of us talk about the Holy Spirit, and in the book of Acts, remember in chapter 2, the Holy Spirit was bestowed and received well, we are going to share with you about the Holy Spirit because we don't want you only to know of the Holy Spirit. We don't want you just to know about the Holy Spirit. We want you to embrace the Holy Spirit. We want you to call upon the Holy Spirit. And that's where the power of the Holy Spirit moving will come upon us. And you will see all the things that I've talked to you about. Number three, we want to intentionally see people saved for Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? You know why? Because these are the last days. There's not much time left. And we want to see people saved for Jesus Christ. Fourth theme, witnessing and testifying. You are going to be the witnesses. You are going to testify about Jesus Christ. And you might be thinking, okay, Pastor John, you said the fifth theme in 
the book of Acts, if I read it, is about oppression and persecution. Well, <laughs> what about the wars? What about our economy that is upside down? What about the crime? What about the looting? What about the, the decrease of morality? That is oppression and persecution. What about right now, before, in our parents' days, right? When we talked about the things of God in families, they would gather around the radio and they would listen to the things of God. Right now, it's upside down. Left is now right. Many times when we share about our faith, they look at us like, you're crazy. Now, you know what the key is? Just like in the book of Acts, where the disbursement helped grow the church, listen carefully. In this time of opposition, opposition and everything that I talked to you about that is going on, people are searching. People are questioning. People are saying, there must be something better. And their eyes, their ears, their hearts are open to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. Yes. And that's what we're going to talk about. And you know what? You know what the answer is? The answer is right here of how we're going to do it. The answer is right here. I want you all to raise your hands. All of everyone, raise your hand. Thank you so much. You're the answer. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you the one. Come on. You the one. <laughs> you the one. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in Ohana. So you can't say, you're the one. Say, you the one. <laughs> you the one. You're the answer. You are the answer. No one else. We will make a difference. We will turn this house into a house of miracles. We will come alive in Jesus. And that brings me to my first point. My first point is right there. Fill it in. Be an influencer for Christ. Be an influencer for Christ. Acts 22, 15 says, you will be his witness to all people of what you have seen and heard. Acts 10, 42 says, and he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Jesus could not be more succinct. He, could be, he couldn't be more clear. You know why? He's talking about influence. He's talking about the fact that each and every one of you here today has a circle of influence. Each and every one of you. It might be in your family. It might be in your business. It might be at work. It might be in your school. But each and every one of you has a circle of influence. And oh my God, if you would be able to share your testimony or the good news of Jesus Christ with your circle of influence. You know, talking about influencers, it makes me think about the phenomenon, the phenomenon of social media influencers. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody? <laughs> okay, social media influencers. These are the people on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They're on TikTok. They're on Twitter. They're on YouTube. And they influence people. Their thoughts, their beliefs, their actions, their reactions, and the amount of time that they, they're consumed in being on social media. You want to, I'll give you some examples, okay? Her name is Charlie D'Amelio. They're going to put a picture up. This is Charlie D'Amelio, okay? Now, when she was 15 years old, and now she's 18, when she was 15 years old, she started posting TikTok videos, you remember, like, right? All that stuff. And she started doing other things on social media. She's now 18, three years later. She has 139.9 million followers that follow her every day. 139 million. And you know how much money she made last year? Charlie D'Amelio last year <clears throat> made $17.5 million at the age of 18. Some of us are in the wrong business. <laughs> now, we're going to show you a short video 
of Charlie in one of her videos that she is influencing people. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Hello, you guys. It's Charlie. Welcome back for another wonderful video. We have baking involved, of course. But today I have a very special guest. I don't think we've ever really posted together besides like on Instagram. This is Carolina. I've known her since the eighth grade. We'll get into that later. Today we're going to be making brownies and s'mores dip. So if you don't know what that is, s'mores dip is literally s'mores, but you use the graham crackers as like a scoop and the brownies are brownies, chocolate cookies, and Oreos all together. So we're gonna make that. This is in my house, so I don't know where everything is, but I guess we're just gonna try our best. I guess we start with the brownies. We have a bowl. I feel like the oil could be in here. Okay, so we need two eggs. We're not the best bakers, but it's the thought that counts. Don't make a mess, really. Okay, then we need two thirds cup oil and one fourth cup water. Look at that, we're off to a great start already. Okay, and we just have like regular brownie mix. S'mores dip is the best. If you haven't had s'mores dip, I definitely recommend making it. Uh, okay. <laughs> she made $17.5 million doing that. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Am I missing something? I'm sitting here scratching my head. She did that and a couple dances. Remember TikTok? $17.5 million. And she has 140 million followers that follow her every day. What is going on with our society? I can't figure it out. If you're a millennial and you like what you just saw, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Okay, number two. His name is Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast, okay? He has 164 million followers. His net worth is 25 million. And you know what he does? He puts videos on social media of stunts and games. I, I still don't get it. <laughs> I still don't get it. Does anybody out there get it that's over like the age of 40? <laughs> okay, the third one, you'll know this one. His name is Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Everyone know Elon Musk? Owner of Tesla, he owns SpaceX programs, sending people into space. And what did he just do? It's in process, but he just bought Twitter, one of the major platforms of social media, for $44 billion. And you know how much Elon Musk is worth? Elon Musk is worth $219 billion. And he just bought Twitter for $44 billion. Why did he buy Twitter for $44 million? Here it is. He wants to reshape the way that we hear and we see on Twitter how things are communicated. I'm going to take you back to what's happening. The fact that they want to perhaps try to control our thoughts, our beliefs, our actions, our reactions, and our time consumed. I wouldn't ask you to put all your hands up about all those who spend too much time on social media. Don't put your hands up. Oh, there you did. <laughs> He's honest. Now, here's my point. Here's my point. What do they all have in common? What do they all have in common? They all intentionally try to affect our lives with the things that they do and control our thoughts, our beliefs, our actions, our reactions, and the time that we participate with them. And by doing that, they are millionaires and billionaires. But you know what's different, okay? That we and everyone here who has their own circle of influence. All of you right here, you don't need a TikTok cookie time. You don't need to dance on TikTok. You don't need to have stunts and games. You don't need to Twitter and talk about fake news. You know what you have that they don't have? You have the good news of Jesus Christ. And can I hear an amen? amen. Think about it. Think about it. This is what is permeating our society. This is what is permeating our society. <clears throat> and we need to be the antithesis. Say antithesis. Say antithesis. Do you know what antithesis is? It's a counter. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's a solution from what you're trying to. It's the complement that is opposite. We are the antithesis. You know why? Because through your circle of influence, 
you can make a difference. And that's what we're talking about today, to be an influence of Christ. And here's the best part. Listen carefully. Elon Musk, Mr. Beast, Charlie D'Amelio, they're millionaires and billionaires. Do you think they can take that money to the grave? No. But everyone that you influence with the good news of Jesus Christ, they can take those riches and their eternal life to heaven. Can I hear in hallelujah? Do you get it, folks? You get it. It's our perspective of what we're thinking about today. It's our perspective. And who has the Lord given us to accomplish all this? So first point, be an influencer. Second point, who has the Lord given us to help us with all of this? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Holy Spirit, our comforter, our healer, our guide, our teacher. Now, I want to make this very clear. Many of us know of the Holy Spirit. Many of us know about the Holy Spirit, but how many of you, how many of us embrace and call upon the Holy Spirit throughout the day, every day, so that you will see the power of the Holy Spirit, so that you will see the healing of the Holy Spirit, you will see the teaching of the Holy Spirit, you will see the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I told you I'm going to be direct, and I'm going to be direct because it is so important. The Holy Spirit. And that's your point too right there. But first, I want to share Acts 2, 1 through 4 with you. The scripture says that when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And as that continues behind me as a B-roll, so you get the image, write in your notes right now, be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 through 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It was at Pentecost where the Holy Spirit was bestowed. And we're going to share in this series about the gifts of the Spirit and about the fruits of the Spirit. Because here it is, folks, I want to repeat this. I really believe that in this church that it is time we come alive. And how we're going to come alive is to embrace and call upon the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what happened today. I had to walk my own talk. Because this morning, my granddaughter, who is a year and a half old, who has asthma, caught a cold. And this morning, the first thing this morning, as I'm trying to finish my message and family's doing our thing, she gets an asthma attack and starts wheezing where... Many of you who have asthma, you know that everything gets constricted and she couldn't breathe. And she had to be rushed to the hospital today. And, you know, your, your, your immediate reaction is, what's going on? <clears throat> but we decided to pray. We decided to pray. We decided the Holy, to ask the Holy Spirit to come and move on her life and to touch this little one-and-a-half-year-old named Jordy. And God will use many ways because hours went by as she was at Kapilani Hospital, and then we heard from my daughter, Malia, that said, okay, they gave her steroids. And we don't normally want steroids, but the steroids helped her to open up and begin to breathe again. And parents, when you are there looking at a little child that looks helpless and cannot breathe, and your heart breaks, praise God that we can call on the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just want to thank the Lord for how we move. Now, what I want to tell you today is, I really believe that as the Holy Spirit moves here at New Hope, Oahu, you will see healing. You will see miracles. And I want to call up right now a wonderful couple that is part of our church. They've been facilitated with life change. I want to call up Mike and Polly Schick. Please welcome them.
Hello, welcome. <laughs> Look at that beautiful smile on this Mother's Day. Well, I was talking with Polly and Mike, and Polly, you had a scare medically, and you needed a miracle. Can you tell us what happened? Yes. It was a Friday morning, and I woke up with severe chest pain, so much so that it frightened me, and I said, Mike, and he looked at me and said, you need to go to the hospital. So we went straight away to emergency, and right away they started taking blood, and um, test after test, x-rays, uh, CAT scans, and I'm, I'm thinking, what is going on? And I looked at Mike, and I could just tell that he was trying to be really brave. And um, I, I knew the news was bad, you know. And Mike worked at the hospital, so he knew everybody. And there were whispers. Uh, I heard I had um, nodules on my liver. And they were doing all these things. And um, my first reaction was, am I going to die? <laughs> um, I was pretty scary. But, you know, when, thank God, I'd been doing my devos and, and um, talking and walking with the Holy Spirit. And when I do that, and he talks to me, I don't hear him here. I recognize his voice because I hear him here. And starts welling up in me. And, um, he said, you've got this, because I've got this. Amen. I've got you. And so I, I said, OK. And he says, I have equipped you. I've been equipping you, and I will equip you. And when I thought about it, the Devo that I had done the day before was not by sight, but by faith. That was the title. The day before that was get off your face because that was when Joshua was discouraged and he was on, on the ground and on his face and God said, get up, get off your face. I go, okay. And, and another one was um, put on your full armor, Amen. full armor of God. And I believe and, that you reached out to life change yes. in asking for prayer. Yes, and we did. I believe that uh, uh, the Holy Spirit leading you. Now, I want to stop and take a moment with Mike because what happened with the scans, Mike? You know, you, are, you work in the medical field, so can you tell us, were the scans true and what you saw as an um, x-ray person? Well, I, I'm, uh, I've been in the field for about 40 years, yes. and I did probably 10 years in CAT scan. And I was really concerned, so I w actually went in with her and watch from the control booth. And, uh, and I'm starting to, my heart's starting to sink because I'm seeing uh, masses come up in her liver. And I know, I know what that means. And I look over at the, uh, uh, the, the head of the CAT scan department, like 20, 25 years experience. And he turned to me and he says, uh, it's metastasis, he says. And metastasis usually means that there's a primary tumor somewhere mm -hmm. and it has grown and spread and that's what we're seeing is metastasis in the liver in these spots and that was confirmed later the same day by a radiologist now what is so cool is that through prayer through your devos through your faith tell us here what transpired when they you tell us what happened okay so we, we were actually doing battle I, w I was doing spiritual battle Every negative thought that was coming in, I mean, sort of the spirit. I mean, I, I had the full armor. I, you know, the Holy Spirit had prepared me. Mike was dealing with his own thing. But anyway, we had um, the prayer ministers and life change. They were, they were doing spiritual warfare. Uh, we had the army of prayer warriors going, going full blast. And I could just feel that. And it was interesting because I know I was doing an individual fight. Mike was doing an individual mm -hmm. fight. But we were also doing a corporate fight. fight. And there's so much power in that that Amen. I was not alone. And so um, 
This happened on a Friday. We weren't going to have the MRI until Monday. So it was a long weekend. but short weekend. Um, but come Monday, we had the MRI. Mike had consultation on Tuesday, and that's when we found out that when they compared the, when they looked at the scans, there was nothing, nothing. Amen, amen. Zippo. So get this, everybody. <clears throat> Mike is an x-ray person. They compared the original with the secondary. They put it on each other, and it, it, it showed all the nodules were gone. Praise God. Yeah. Yes. And, and it yes. wasn't a different picture. It wasn't. It wasn't because you could see it's like getting tracing paper that you had marked and then moving it over, and it matched. Yeah. Except that there were no nodules, and there were varying sizes, large and many, many, and then all of a sudden, I want to ask you one more question. One more yes. question. Succinctly, you had a scare before that, and God moved on your heart, and he told you something. Can't share with him. Yeah. So previously, I had mm. another situation where I had a cyst on my uterus, and, and circumstances were such that I was so afraid. And so I was praying, and I asked some other people to pray for me. Then when I had gone in for the pre-op, it was no longer there. <laughs> the weird thing was, I mean, I... I was so thankful. I thanked God for answered prayer. But the weird thing was that I was a wimpy Christian, and I told no one. And at that time, we were going to Faith Baptist Church, and it was customary that they would say, anybody have a praise report? And I just kind of shrank. And, and this was in a body of believers, and I couldn't get up and give a praise and report. And you know what is so profound about that? Now, that is the second healing miraculously. And what does Acts... The third, what is the, the fourth theme about? Witnessing and testifying? Yeah, so <laughs> I, when the second miracle happened, I mean, I thought, how could I have done that the first time? Because I cannot help but tell everybody, yeah. everybody, you know, and now is the third chance. And that's why they're here today to let you know that miracles are real. The Lord moves, the Holy Spirit moves with miracles when we give our heart and faith to them. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Let's thank Polly and Mike. Thank, thank you. you so much. And that's what we want to see in our church. We want to see the Holy Spirit move. You know, what will it take for us to be a house of miracles? What will it take for Jesus to come alive? And that's my point number three, that we would be a doer, not a doubter. Feel that in. Be a doer, not a doubter. Say, be a doer, be a doer. Not, a not a doubter. You can't help but love Peter. Peter in the Bible... He's zealous, he's at times outspoken, he's impulsive, he's strong-willed. Sometimes he has to retract and take his foot out of his mouth. He makes mistakes. He denied Jesus three times, but the Lord used him profoundly. The Lord used Peter profoundly. How? Do you know that Peter gave the first sermon in the Christian church? Chapter 2, he gave the first sermon. Now, here's what I want to tell you. After Peter spoke to everyone there and gave the first sermon, in Acts 2.37, what did everyone say? They said, brothers, what do we do? Brothers, what do we do? And the answer is right here. There it is. To be doers, not doubters. I'm going to share with you Acts 2.36.16. Uh, it says, now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you've seen and will see of me. There it is, folks, that we will get up and stand on our feet and be doers and not be distracted by life, not be distracted by the world and everything that's going on that tries to influence us, that tries to take our eyes off of Jesus. I want to share with you in Matthew 14, 27 to 31, and this is Peter again. Jesus immediately said to them as he's on the water, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. That's Jesus. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. When he saw the wind, 
he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Do you get what's happening? That when Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on water. When you and I here keep our eyes on Jesus and walk close to Jesus, we will come alive in the name of Jesus and we will be able to do miraculous things. We will, need, we will see breakthrough. We will see all the things that I talked to you about. But when we take our eyes off of Jesus because of distractions and things going on in the world, we may get into trouble and we may sink just like Peter. But Jesus is always there to give us a hand and pick us up. Can I hear an amen? amen. Yes. So may I encourage you, be a doer, not a doubter. And what does that mean? Okay, what it means is to do something. We can't do everything but something. I love this from Gil Scott Hearn. He says this, nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. What is it that you can do for the Lord? <clears throat> what is it that you can be an influencer by? Is it being a prayer warrior? Is it being a part of a small group? Is it reaching out to someone in need? Is it sharing your testimony at work or at school or amongst your family and friends? What can you do? Because you don't have to do everything. It only takes one thing to do something. In fact, what you might want to do is join our eight-week study because we're going to be talking about the book of Acts in our services. And then as a complement to that, we're going to have our eight-week study about the Acts of the Apostles by Louis Giglio. It's a video series. You can find out more information out there. But you, if you're part of a small group, do it. Even if you want to make your family your small group, do it. If, even if you want to make you and your friend a small group, do it. If you want to do it by yourself because you like to be alone, do it, okay? But be a part of our small group. And on this series, Jesus Made His Move, What's Yours? And the study of the book of Acts, we have a creed. I want us all to stand right now. Let's stand. And I want you to repeat after me this creed, okay? I'm going to say it, and then you repeat it after me. Okay, ready? We are, we are a, house a house of miracles, an Acts church, church. Empowered, by empowered by the Holy Spirit, witnesses of Jesus, witnesses of Jesus. seeing the lost saved, the lost saved. Miracles, happen. miracles happen, and opposition turned into opportunity. And can I get an applause for the Lord? let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that today we could officially launch our series. You, Jesus, made your move. What's ours going to be? And we hope that ours will be to be an Acts church. That as we come alive and we move by the Holy Spirit, we call on the Holy Spirit, and we learn about the church in Acts, that we would be a house of miracles. That we would see miracles happen, that we would see breakthrough happen, that we would see healing happen, that we would see relationships mended, and that each and every one of us, besides being an influencer led by the Holy Spirit, we would be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word, that we would be doers, all for your glory, Lord, so that this house of miracles would be on fire. We love you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name, and everyone says, Amen. Let's thank the Lord. And while you're standing, so we're going to continue in the series next week. And uh, we have a very special guest coming next week that, that's going to take the baton from me. And he's going to be speaking in all of our services live, not by video. Next week we have Pastor Wayne here speaking all weekend. Yay! <laughs> yep. Yep, Pastor Wayne's coming in for the week, and he's going to continue in the book of Acts. So I want you to come back, come and say aloha to Pastor Wayne, or bring your friends so that they can come and hear the word, that we would be a house of miracles, that we would come alive in the name of Jesus. Amen?
And with that, this will be our anthem song every weekend. Let's sing our anthem together. Here we go. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is offering thank you for being here with us on this mother's day weekend mothers we love you god loves you more have a great week aloha ahui ho amen this is a house of miracles aloha and welcome if i haven't had the chance to meet you yet my name is donovan i'm one of the pastors here on the team at new hope oahu and this is the afterward so pastor john is just about to come and join us but before hey pastor john you're here welcome 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 we're so glad thank you for preaching that amazing word it god downloaded it and i am so blessed because pastor donovan I really feel it is a call on our church, both here and online, that, you know, it's been a great, great time, but we need to take this next step. We need to step it up. We need to come alive, led by the Holy Spirit, because we all need to see miracles and breakthrough, especially in these times the last days. Amen. And just like you said, it all starts with you out there. Even though yes. you may not be here in the room with us, you are still a part of our ohana. Uh, and in fact, even before we get into the questions, Pastor John, I just want to encourage you that if you need prayer, uh, if there's something that you're fighting for, just like uh, our sister Polly shared, you know, we can do battle on our own. Amen. But we're also here to do battle with you and for you. And we would love to pray for you. It would be our greatest honor. So uh, you can do that by filling out a connect card, by texting the word aloha to 808. 842-4242 or by clicking the link in the chat. Again, we would love to pray for you, but we also want you to grow deeper and stronger Amen. in your faith. And that's why Amen. Pastor John's here right now. So yes, Pastor John, amazing word. Uh, first question that we have for you as an online ohana is, you know, we talked about doubt, how we're called to be a doer, not a doubter. If I'm someone who's been struggling with doubt for a long time, you know, what is something that I can do to overcome my doubt? Oh, boy, I love this question. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> it is so simple, like that mom who was telling her little girl the answer, draw close to Jesus. And you know how you do it? Your time in the Word, your time in prayer. And let me encourage you, when you read the Word, read it and then let it read you. And you know how you do that? Meditate on the Word. Because the Word will come alive as you meditate and you apply it to your life and what you're going through. And in those times when the devil tries to distract you or pull you away, call on the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because together with the Word and prayer, and this is going to be a big theme with us, calling on the Holy Spirit. You know, many of us think about it. Many people say, yeah, the Holy Spirit. Yes, I know all of the Holy Spirit. I know about how many people call on the power of the Holy Spirit to lead them throughout the day. You know, this morning when my granddaughter was sick, we just stopped and Holy Spirit, you are the healer. Send your healing hand upon Jordy. It's that type of effort and action. Call on the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I know sometimes when it comes to doubt, right, we can think doubt will pull us away or further from God. But sometimes doubt can actually have the potential to do good if it allows us to draw closer to him, like you said, right? Yes. And just yes. like the Bereans that you know we might be going into later mm -hmm. on in Acts, they went into the Bible and they studied, they prayed, studied the word, and you know got together in small group yep. to learn more about that. Which brings us to our second question. Yes, you brother. mentioned uh, the Acts of the Apostles small group. Now, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm online, why do I need to be a part of this small group and what can I expect from it? So as I shared, the book of Acts is a link from... Jesus' ministry, the life of Christ as he walked on the earth. 
But when he was resurrected, from that point on, it is the book of Acts which founds a church and everything to follow until Jesus returns. And so it is so important that we jump into the book of Acts and we don't just shallow dive. And the way that we're going to deep dive, Pastor Donovan, is come to service on the weekends, either online or in person, and be filled by the message that the pastors give. But in addition to that, the book of Acts is so rich that the video series is a compliment. It's not a repeat. It's a compliment to go even further or in a different perspective or in a different part of Acts to give you a broader view of the book of Acts. So it's a wonderful, comprehensive time in the book of Acts for such a time as this until Jesus returns. That's right. And we're going to be doing the study together as well. And I know you know, earlier this week in uh, our staff meeting, you shared kind of the story of how it came about. And, you know, just to give you the long story short is that this is not just a series that, you know, we're doing just for the sake of doing another small group series, but it's really something that, you know, the Holy Spirit put on your heart and that God put on your heart to kind of allow us to become the Acts 2 church because the church is not a building. The church is us. It's me, you, together serving God. Uh, and what better way to kind of grow our faith deeper and stronger than by jumping into this study because we know, again, Absolutely. you know, if God is calling us to do this as a church, then you know, there's nothing but good that can come from this. And I know that God is going to bless your heart, allow you to grow deeper and stronger in your faith as you say yes to him in this way. Right, Pastor John? Yes. And in this study, the small groups, it doesn't need to be a big group. It can be you by yourself if, that, if that's all you got. It can be you and your, your friend. It can be, it just get into it. Don't let this opportunity pass because it's a great study on the book of Acts and the Acts of the Apostles. That's right. So again, we're going to have an online group uh, led by Pastor Garrett starting Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Hawaii time. So we hope that you'll join us for that. Or as Pastor John mentioned, you can start your own group, uh, whether it's with your family, your friend group, or maybe even just by yourself. But don't let this opportunity pass you by. Jump into the book of Acts with us and just see what God will do through you. Now, isn't there a corporate in-person study here at the ministry That's center? That's right. If you're here on the island of Oahu, we would love for you to join us here as well on Thursday nights at 6.30 p.m. right here at the ministry center. So lots of options. Yeah. And again, maybe you have, uh, you've you been tuning in online on the island of Oahu and you've never come down to our building. This is your chance to finally come, come down. down. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful <laughs> time of fellowship and you will not regret it. So again, jump in. Uh, to Acts of the Apostles with us, and really let's become the church that God has called us and created us to be. Well, thank you, Pastor John, for joining us, sure. and thank you for joining us as well. We're just about uh, to the end of our service, but before you log off, uh, we just want to give you the blessing. It's the same blessing that Moses and Aaron gave to the Israelites all the way back uh, in Bible times, and it's the same blessing that we want to leave you with today. So family, will you receive the blessing? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you, and may he give you peace. Family, we love you. We'll see you back next week. And in all times, would you always remember that you are loved. Yep, and Pastor remember, John. next week, Pastor Wayne will be here giving the message. That's right. So invite your family and friends and join us again for this amazing series. But family, we love you, and we'll see you back next time. Aloha. Aloha. Ahui ho.